momentum doesn't have uh, a, a, okay, I should say, uh, uh, inertia is not a calculation. Inertia is, is like the effect of a force there. You can, you can feel it by yourself. Like I mentioned, uh, if you go for like LRT or MRT or bus, you know, if you're standing, that's the best place to actually experience what is called inertia. That your body wants to continue keep moving, but the bus has to stop or turn corners. So your bodies are, are, are thrown forward. That's, that's the effect of the force. That, that's what you can feel. Right, so momentum, right? It's a calculation, which it can be proven by numbers. Inertia cannot prove. Inertia can only uh, see the after effect, you know. But uh, you know, when the bus stops and then you fall down, fall to the front, and then that's when you can see the effect of force. But momentum is something where you can calculate and uh, you can already pre-know the number, how, how, how big is the momentum, how small is the momentum, even before the experiment, right? So uh, momentum is defined as the product of its mass and velocity. Basically, it's a, the, the definition is the calculation, okay? Mass times velocity, okay? So if you have mass but you're not moving like zero velocity like a number times zero it's still gonna be zero right no momentum if you have a velocity it means you're moving but you have no mass you still get a zero so uh, i don't know what it's maybe like ghost i guess <laughs> like spirit maybe um you know ghosts can move but uh, there is no mass right so when the ghost hit you right you, you don't you don't feel like an object is actually colliding so uh, there's no there's no momentum so hence both must exist together huh? you must have mass and you must have velocity together okay so uh, this only applies to moving object huh? okay huh? if got object but no move zero ma uh, uh, if uh, uh, no mass, but moving also cannot, it's not object anymore, right? So momentum only applies to moving things, not stationary things, okay? If you are sitting still on your seat, on your chair, your body doesn't have momentum. But if you start standing up and running outside your house, that is when your body has momentum. Okay, so we have two um, factors here that is affecting, which is the mass and velocity. So the greater the mass, the greater the momentum. The greater the velocity, the greater the momentum. Of course, the mass, the calculation above already show you, all right? If you have greater mass times a number of greater velocity, of course, you get a greater momentum if both of the number increases. But usually in experiment, right, we don't do both factors together. We can only do one by one. For instance, if you look at this one, we are testing on mass. One trolley, two trolley. Whereas this one, we are testing on the same trolley, but different height. That translates to velocity. Okay? That translates to velocity, like how fast the trolley goes. So we never do both together, okay? So if you see a lorry uh, or a bus that is speeding, uh, that's going to be very bad if, if there is any uh, collision or if there's any accident happen because a bus or a lorry is already huge enough as has very big mass and it is speeding somehow. It means your number uh, here, uh, it's going to be a big number. So when the lorry or the bus uh, crashes, then that's the number of momentum, okay? So we have only two factors involved, that's all, okay? We try out the exercise, shall we? So please turn with me to um, exercise page. Wait, let me look up for the page. Uh, 45, yeah. 45, everybody. Question eight. Yeah, page 45. Okay, so like I was saying, there is two factors. You have to determine which factor it is. That makes your answer more accurate and you know, you're more confident in answering. Lah. So if you look at this question, we have one kg, one kg both. That means we are not testing on the mass. Lah. We are testing on how fast the trolley rolls down. 
Okay, so this will be a velocity experiment. Okay, can okay, like because uh, that helps a lot. You know, everything here relies on your manipulator and responding. So question A: What is your observation uh, on the block of plasticine P and Q? So that means what do you see? The numbers here are already given. So you know B is going to be deeper. A is going to be shallower. So B is going to be deeper. A is shallower, right? right? That's what you are expecting to see. So you need to write down your observations. So can you all try and um, form your sentences? Like, uh, I just, it's up to you. It's very freestyle, you know? You just have to mention that which one is deeper than which one then can. So that is called the depth of them. So you can make use of this uh, responding variable to, to form your sentence. So. Uh, you try out, uh, I'll show you mine in a while. So please uh, compare the depth of then for P and Q, which one deeper than which one, okay? Light. Okay, is everyone all right? So let me show you mine. No, you, you don't have to like erase or change the whole thing. So as long as it sounds something like that. The dent form, or if you copy the depth of dent on the plasticine, up to you, doesn't matter, okay? The dent form on the block of plasticine Q is deeper than the dent form on block of plasticine B. That's it, to compare your observation. That's what you will see with your eyes, actually. Everyone all right? So B, manipulated, uh, your factor, we are testing on velocity, remember? So you can actually write a uh, velocity of the trolley or just velocity will do. Okay, velocity of the trolley or velocity will do. Okay, can, can? Yeah, I'm pretty. <laughs> That's a thumbs up, all good, nice. So velocity, no problem. Like constant variable, uh, something here must be fixed. Can you realize that? Actually, very obvious lah. Like I mentioned just now, you cannot test two, cannot test two factor together one. If you want to test velocity as your manipulator, right? Then the other factor must be your constant variable. So what is fair or the same between the two experiment or set A and set B here will be the another factor that we're talking about is so you, you okay so you all get what i mean that will be your mass of the trolley or you could just write mass okay mass of the trolley up to you and can okay constant variable if question asks for um uh responding uh, then free answer uh, this one responding i just copy through but there's no Responding variable here. So question C, state one inference. Inference, remember your um, format, observation plus reason. So this is going to be a long one, but you have to uh, write down your observation first, means say what you see. Okay, uh, it's like, oh, uh, B deeper, le. why? Uh? Then you have to, oh, B deeper, because, you know, you have to kind of start off your sentence with uh, your observation, okay? So why, uh, why B is deeper? Uh? Uh, very simple, uh, B is deeper because obviously trolley K is faster. La. Remember, we're talking about velocity. Why deeper? That K faster. La. When K goes faster, right, means it produces a greater momentum. Make sense? It's like a, the whole thing is coming out now. Like it makes more sense as you write inference because that's your reasoning why we get a deeper than and a shallower than. That's because fast or slow and that causes bigger momentum or a smaller momentum. So you need three things here. Let me mention to you again. You have to try out to write yourself. Okay. First, you have to write down your observation. Yeah. So Q is deeper, right? Then you continue. Why deeper? Ah? Oh, trolley K is moving faster or 
higher velocity, okay, then causes bigger momentum. Something like that. I need these three points. So try out in your own way. I will show you mine in a while. Okay. So start off with your observation. Okay, like which one is deeper, you know? That's your observation. So three things huh? you check huh? if you have, talk about your observation, which is deeper. And then number two, about trolley K, right? Why, why deeper? Because faster huh? velocity. Huh? And then third one, it's about momentum. That's why deeper. Huh? Okay. It's like you witness a car accident and you're like, ayo, ayo, why the car like gone case? Ayo, why like that? Hey, survive or not? Then people will say, Ay, of course like that. La. Go so fast. Uh, then my bigger momentum law, uh, then my makan the, the, the wall or the tree law, then my like that law. So you have to kind of explain like the steps. Yeah. So I'll show you my example. So deeper than form on the block of us in Q. That's your observation. Then I, I show you this way because I want you to see properly. Yeah. So everyone in chat box. So because then I talk about the, the reason. Trolley K is moving faster produces a bigger momentum. Something like that. I'm pretty sure our sentence will not be exactly the same, but that is fine as long as you talk about the main points. All right, everybody, no problem. Then we will go for hypothesis. Okay, do some correction or copy it down. Then... Let's talk about hypothesis. Okay. So question D, state uh, hypothesis. So uh, I'm pretty sure everyone is very familiar with hypothesis. Uh, hypothesis is manipulated plus responding. If you can do a the the question, then go ahead. Don't think about it anymore. If the the is good, please do the the. Okay. So we're talking about the what? The manipulator is res uh, velocity. What's your responding? Responding is your, this one, right? Depth of then, right? But it actually means momentum. Yeah. So responding, uh, let me just extra right here for you. Okay. Responding is actually momentum. I know responding is how deep it is, you know, how deep is the depth of then, but what do you think that is that actually translate to momentum? How bad the car crash is, that translate to how bad the momentum or how big the momentum is. If it's not very bad, then it means translate to a lesser momentum. If it's very bad, you know, the car almost gone and become like a piece of paper flat, then you know that's a very bad momentum or very big momentum is going on. Okay, so donkey, can you do that? Please do a the the sentence and consists of your manipulated and responding. Okay, all good. So probably it sounds. Uh, it sounds like that. In your chat box, everyone. The higher the velocity of the object is. Now, velocity cannot use faster, slower. Must use higher or lower velocity. The larger the momentum it will be, or the greater the momentum it will be. Cannot write the, the higher the momentum, no. Okay? The larger the momentum, or the, the bigger the momentum that is acceptable. Okay, all good. Right, next, shall we? Okay, 
Uh, there you go. That's the the uh, theory of momentum. Okay, all good. Okay, so we are moving into another part, which is pressure. Shall we? Let's talk about pressure. Okay, so please come back to page um, twenty-four. Okay, this is actually not the air pressure, not the pressure for from exam or pressure from your parents. This um, is a physical pressure where you can feel it. So it's also a calculation. So pressure is actually equals to force over time. So um, definition is actually explaining formula. Okay, you uh, force that act on a unit of surface area. Okay, so force is in Newton, area is in meter square. Sorry about the two, it's supposed to be a small, uppercase small, um, small two, okay? Um, so Newton meter negative two, that's usually what we use as your um, unit, okay? So very simple, if you want to create a high pressure, you must have a greater force, but smaller, surface area okay if you want to create a low pressure you must have a small force large surface area so for instance some examples for you like cutting things with knives cutting things are knives have very small and very sharp surface area, very small surface area. And then someone you are cutting with your force, you're using your force to cut things. That is actually creating the red color arrow. That's why you can cut through meat, you can cut through things or whatsoever. Okay, uh, vice versa. Um, and, um, shoulder strap, backpack, you know, you all have backpack, like your school bag, um, your shoulder strap, the, the wider it is, the, the better, the easier for your shoulder, right? Uh, especially like backpackers, those very heavy and huge back, right? Their shoulder straps are a lot wider and it, it spread across the whole shoulder one. It's not like our school bag, you know? Uh, that is because creating larger surface area, then you will have a smaller pressure on your shoulder. They're not so painful. There's a lot more la, like snowboarding, that's large surface area. So you don't sink into the snow, uh, vice versa as ice skating. Ice skating, you need a sharp blade uh, for the shoe. So you can have a higher pressure, you can mark on the ice, you can have grip on the ice, right? Um, what else? Car tires, uh, uh, four wheel drive or Hilux, you know, all the big, big cars, four wheel drives, their tire are wider because you want to create a smaller surface area. Uh, sorry, larger surface area, so you don't sink into the mud. Those cars are meant to go into off-roads, uh, which our normal car cannot because our tyres are uh, narrower, which you have a smaller surface area, means you have a greater pressure and you will get stuck in the mud. So, so much more, so much more. For ladies, uh, you, you don't wear your high heels um, into... Uh, grass or uh, even like muddy areas because your uh, high heels are going to sink into it, right? So we wear flats. So, so much more examples that we can have. But the theory is just like that. Two factor that is affecting, it's either pressure, uh, it's either force or it's either area, okay? So for instance, look at this picture. We are obviously uh, playing around with surface area. So if this one falls down, right, this will be shallower if this fall down right this will go deeper obviously okay very simple theory right uh, i think we can try out this question already so please turn with me to page 47 question 11 like everybody page 47 all right Let's do this. Now, uh, same, same. Whenever you uh, uh, do questions like that, please make sure you identify which factor are we talking about, right? So uh, it, there's only two factors. It's either um, force or it's either 
surface area, right? So obviously this is not about surface area. Look at both blocks are being dropped like that, but they are dropped at different height. So different height basically means the other factor, which is different force, right? Their weight itself is the force already. So obviously they are dropping at different force. So my friends, this particular question, we are talking about force factor. Okay, so as you can see, the one that dropped from higher go deeper. Okay, and then for B is shallower. Okay, how deep it is that represents pressure produced compared to um, the other one. Can, can? Okay, like we kind of know what is going on already, right? So like, let's go to hypothesis. So same, same story. Hypothesis is manipulated variable plus responding variable. You know what? Let's get this done. Then we have a more accurate answer. Lah. Okay, so like manipulated will be the factor that we are testing, which is force. So um, yeah, you can write... Um, uh, force produced by the wooden block, okay? Force produced by the wooden block. Or you might be thinking, eh, can I write the height? Uh, um, height acceptable can also, height of the wooden block. That represents force, but I suggest you write force because that will help your hypothesis because your hypothesis is not going to talk about the height. Like the higher the, the metal... Uh, or the you know I don't think that uh, is necessary so uh, we use uh, force instead okay can can so like uh, next one responding variable responding will be this one right right we can actually use the same uh, saying as the this one Depth of dent, isn't that the same thing? That's the plasticine, that's how deep it is. So same, same, depth of dent on the plasticine, okay? Depth of dent on the plasticine. So yeah, that's your responding variable for this. And I want you to write something extra afterwards. So after you write the depth of dent on the plasticine, then slash, right? That represents what? That represents pressure, right? Same like, same like what we had just now. Um, how, how deep the dent is, that represents the momentum, right? Produced by the car or the trolley. So in this case, this will actually means pressure. Alrighty, okay. So since you have force or height of the block from the plasticity and you have your pressure, right? It's time to get back to your hypothesis. Can we do a the sentence? I think the will be Good enough. So let's go ahead for the, the, okay. Okay, no problem. So the, what were manipulated? The greater the force, um, comma, the greater the pressure is produced or the larger the pressure is produced or the um, vice versa also can, the smaller, the, but usually we do the, the other side, the opposite one. I mean, the, the positive answer, I should say. Okay, so the greater the force uh, produced, the or the greater the force, comma, the greater the pressure produced. Okay, can can, right? So there you go. Next one, uh, you're supposed to measure and write down depth of dent for A, isn't it? For A, um, please measure according to yours. My, if you if you follow my answer, um, it will be wrong because your book is um two pages in one, right? So please measure yours and. I think we, we follow your answer, not my answer. Okay, so what do you get? Uh, how deep is A? Yeah, that's what you need to look for. I think less than 1 cm, isn't it? So what do you all get?
Zero point seven. Mm, okay, we'll follow yours. CT is it zero point seven? So the rest, you'll get zero point seven. Should be should be plus minus uh, zero point seven zero point eight. So um, because mine is one cm, which is uh, not correct for you. So zero point seven cm, whichever lah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Nurin. Your internet very bad, is it? <laughs> Are you okay there? You surviving with your Wi-Fi or internet? Okay, so 0 0.7, everybody. Right, next one. Uh, we are replacing block A by using C. So obviously, la, look at this, this is so sharp. This is definitely surface area factor now, okay? So when you have a smaller surface area, pressure will be higher. Okay, very straightforward, yeah? So if we replace A by using C, Okay, predict the depth of then produced on the plasticine when block C is dropped at the same height. So everything else the same, but I'm just changing this surface area to this surface area. So obviously it's going to be deeper, but question says predict. So remember we were having 0 0.7 just now. Yeah, so if we change it to this sharp surface area, we must have like a uh, a bigger number, isn't it? Like a deeper dent. So more than 0, 0 0.7. But don't go too extreme like what? Um, 5 cm. But you go through the plasticine some more, you pierce through the table and then you pierce through the earth crust, is it? To the earth core, is it? So don't go too crazy with numbers. So let's stick with, I think, 1 cm is good. 1.2. 1 1.2 uh, 1 maximum. Uh. Don't go too much because uh, it doesn't make sense. Uh. Okay. Friction is also in off. <laughs> yeah, so 1.2 max, uh, 1.2 max. Uh, we stay at 1.2 max. So you can do like 1 cm, 1.2 max. Okay, don't go too deep. All right, there you go. That's pressure, my friends. All good. Then um, from pressure, we go on with another part called the hydraulic principle or hydraulic system which uses the idea of pressure but to um to work on something else so let's come back to a hydraulic principle hydraulic principle says that when pressure is applied on liquid in a covered container the pressure that you apply uh, will be transferred to all parts of the liquid uniformly so this is what happens, or I should say the hydraulic principle promises. When you apply pressure, apply a force, the pressure that you produce on the left side, small piston, will transfer uniformly in a container okay, to the right side. So in other words, pressure on the left is equals to pressure on the right. Okay, so pressure produced here is equals to, oh, hold up. No, no, that's not what you're thinking. I know, I know that you're thinking that, oh, what? Are you saying like I press 10 Newton here, then I should get like 10 Newton? No, we're talking about pressure, guys. Pressure is force over area. You got to, you got to divide 10 over 2. It's equals to dono divide 100. Hence, this calculation uh, is not for you to prove that it's equal. This calculation is for you to find out the unknown for whichever question wants you to find out, okay? Hence, uh, for example, this case, I want to know uh, how heavy I can lift up by pressing 10 Newton. Things are given. You just need to find out your unknown, okay? So what are all these for in daily life? Okay, we have a few. Uh, I think uh, you need to know this tree, first of all, will be for cars, hydraulic, Brakes, our car brakes uses hydraulic. You are stepping with your feet. 
at the brake, but you are able to stop a fast moving car. Isn't that small uh, force in order to do something bigger, a lot bigger? Okay, you're using your leg to stop a car like, literally, right? Hydraulic, that's how hydraulic works. So number two, we have uh, also about car hydraulic um, jack, you know, the thing that hoists the car up, hydraulic jack in the in the um uh, in the workshop where they, they pump with the hand like beep boop, beep boop, beep boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, then the car goes up. So jack, that's called hydraulic jack. Yeah, you're using your hand to lift up the car. Leh, no? So uh, third one extra for you, we have frog lift. All the machine that used to lift things in, in, um, in warehouses uh, or like in Ikea, usually you see that thing called frog lift. They lift up um, the load and then they transfer to somewhere else. Or all the construction um, machines that we use, okay, like bulldozer, uh, all the lifters, uh, they, they have hydraulic system in them. Okay, the idea works like that. Of course, they have a more complicated structure and more complicated uh, uh, principle. But uh, the basic is just like that. Okay, can, can, can. Like we try out um, the calculation actually. So can you jump a bit to this one, page 50C. Please look up for this thing. Okay. All right, shall we? Okay, name the principle, ah, yeah, easy lah. Which is what we're talking about. It's called the hydraulic principle. Hydraulic, I should say Pascal principle, but usually we, you will see the word hydraulic more often than Pascal, so hydraulic principle. Okay, all good, hydraulic principle. Okay, like calculate the cross-sectional area of small pistons, see? I need to know how small is this so that I can press 10 Newton, I can lift up 15 Newton. So I'm, I'm having all the information, but I'm missing out with A1. So remember your formula first. Lah, huh? Like everybody, formula equals to force over area 1 equals to force over area 2. 1 is the left side, 2 is the right side. Let's fill in the number. 10 Newton for my force 1 over A1 equals to 15, wait, is it 50? Yeah, 15 Newton over 100 meter cm, sorry. Okay, there you go. Easy chase, my friends. Let me know your answer, okay? Look out for a1. So we're looking for A1. Please find your unknown cross multiply. Okay, anybody got your answer? So A1 should equals to... A thousand over 50, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, a thousand over fifty, so twenty cm square. Right, if you replace this number back to a one, right, you realize that ten over twenty is equals to fifty over hundred, isn't it? Prove yourself, right? Prove yourself. The principle says that it's equal. That's because um of the surface area that is doing the magic. So if your surface area is bigger, you'll be able to lift up something bigger. 
if I'm changing this surface area to 200, uh, I'll be able to leave a 100 Newton because it must be equal. The left side 10 over 20 must equals to 100 over 200, isn't it? That's what um, hydraulic principle promises you. So the magic here is the surface area on the bigger piston that you're able to play around in order to lift up something heavier. Okay, that's how Bernoulli works. Eh, what am I saying? That's how uh, hydraulic works. Okay, all good. Nice. Please come back to Archimedes principle. So like the like, everybody, Archimedes principle. Okay, so uh, now we're at, uh, we're talking about the, we're talking about water now. We're talking about water now. Archimedes applies in uh, water. Yeah, principle applies in water. Okay, so Archimedes principle states that the weight loss of an object when immersed in water is equals to the uptrust that X on the object. Okay, first thing first, you have to understand. For every object uh, that goes into water, right? Okay, there must be a buoyant force that is pushing it. Okay, it doesn't matter uh, light or heavy, but as long as when an object is in water, there will be a buoyant force pushing you upwards. Okay, whether buoyant force is higher or lower, that determines the object to sink or float. That is not what our concern is now. Uh, what I need you to understand is buoyancy or buoyant force, or we could call that as uptrust, which is a force that is um, produced by object that is in water, okay, or in liquid uh, generally. Can, can? Okay, so when the object is placed in water, uh, it must have displaced some of the water. That means it takes up space. Imagine this, you go to the swimming pool, you jump into the swimming pool. You think what? You think the water doesn't need to give you space. Uh, you think you're very small. Uh, so when you go into water, right, the swimming pool water will have to give space to you. Okay, and when, when the swimming pool water gives space to you, basically means the swimming pool water is being displaced by you. Like when you jump into your bathtub, the water must have like, like out of your bathtub. You displace water from the medium. Okay, so when you displace water, the amount of water that you displace is equivalent to your weight loss. Means that uh, in water, you are lighter, right? That's because you have lost some weight in water. Why? Uh? Because it's equals to the uptrust that is pushing you upwards in water. So in other words, means the amount of water that you displace is equals to the uptrust force that the water is giving you. The more water you can displace, the more uptrust you can have. Basically means if you want to displace more water, you got to make sure your volume is big. You must be so big enough in order to displace a lot of water, then you will get a lot of uptrust, then you will be able to float. Okay? So uh, this is how the, the, the story works, okay? Um, let's not talk about float or sink because that doesn't really matter to us now. I just need you to understand there's this principle called the Archimedes principle. And these three arrows, uh, these three circles are very important to, to remember and to find out the answer. So for instance, we have seven Newton of pebble in the air. So we put it into water, it becomes five. So seven minus five, becomes two newton two newton is your weight loss isn't it you were seven newton layer you were seven newton layer once you're in water you become five layer means you have lost two law that is your weight loss 
So once you've got your answer for weight loss, you understand that, oh, that's the liquid displays. Eh? Look at it. That's the liquid displays, two Newton. And you'll be like, oh, that's the uptrust. Yep, there is a force pushing the, the pebble with two Newton. Okay, so up trust equals to liquid displays to Newton equals to weight loss to Newton. And everything here is to Newton, to Newton, to Newton, for instance. Is that all right? Can, can? Yep, that's basically how the principle works. Okay, no problem. Let's try out some. Calculation. So please, a, a big calculation. Uh, so please turn with me to a page. Um, let me see. Okay, uh, I would like to do question 13, page 49. Question 13, everybody. Okay, all good? Right. So let's check out some calculation. Now, um, four point. Okay, first of all, there's there's an error in the question. Uh, the second picture, right? I think the stones should be in the water, lot because that doesn't make sense, right? It's floating but becomes lesser. That doesn't make sense. So, this one, okay, is in the water, ah. Huh? All right, so 4.3 Newton in the air, in the water become 3.2. That means 1.1 is the weight loss. Oh, oh, if I know the weight loss is 1.1 and the liquid displays will be 1.1, weight of liquid displays. And since liquid displays is 1.1, weight loss is 1.1, then the up trust is 1.1, right? The up trust is 1.1. That's how you got all the numbers here, okay? So then it makes more sense for answering the question. Okay, question A, state Archimedes principle. Okay, so Archimedes principle is a principle. Okay, so you'll copy down this one. Uh, yeah, the whole thing. First one, everybody. Ah, no choice. It's a definition. You have to follow the. You have to write the whole thing. Okay, all good, no problem. All right, let's go. So, shall we, B1. What is the weight of liquid X displaced by the stone? The weight of liquid displaced. So did we had already just now? So I know that my weight loss is 1.1. My weight of liquid displays is also 1.1. And my up trust is also 1.1. So my liquid X, yeah, the weight is 1.1. There you go. But uh, of course, we lie on a bit. Like you, have to, you have to do the working a bit to show uh, the... It's not really like working, like, but just to show... Uh, the weight of liquid is equals to uh, uh, what 4.3 Newton minus yeah 4.3 minus 3.2 right 
okay, equals to 1.1 Newton. Okay, no problem. All right, uh, using your answer in B1, calculate the okay, like density of liquid X. Okay, a bit a bit from your lower secondary, uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but there's this thing called density, you'll know, right? But calculation now. Okay, don't care. Lah. First of all, formula comes first. So then C T equals to mass divide by volume. Mass in gram, volume in cm cube. Long time ago, lah, form one. Lah, isn't it? Yeah, calculation a long time ago. Okay. So we need to find out how what is the density of liquid X? Like how, how heavy is it? Like does it sink or does it float or in water or whatsoever? So uh, we need to find out density for X. But first thing first, the formula um, is mass over volume. Do we have mass? Do we have gram here? Not really. We have 93 ml. We have 1.1 Newton. That's not gram. We have to sort of convert to gram. So the only way to convert is 1.1 Newton. So this, I'm not sure if you remember, long time ago. Huh? Okay, 1 kg equals to how many Newton? Anyone? Anybody? 1 kg? equals to how many Newton? 10. Nice, Jajun. Okay. 1 kg equals to 10 Newton. So now, if I need to have gram as my unit, I need to convert. Convert what? I need to convert 1.1 to kg, and I need to convert to gram. So I could get the transition. So, the first thing first, if you don't want to confuse yourself, the, the, the fastest way or the, I mean the not fastest, the easiest way to understand is to change to kg first, then change to gram. Or actually it means please convert Newton into gram. But that's a bit, um, you know, too much step for you. So we do one by one. 1.1 Newton, uh, we have to change to kg first. Uh. Can you do that? Uh, do you know how? Like uh, one, 1 kg equals to 10 Newton. So 1.1 Newton. You're okay now. Are you like counting with your fingers? Like, uh, how? How? Can I? So 1.1 divide 10. Lah. Oh, yeah, 0. Point. 1, 1 kg. Make sense? Then 0 0.11 kg times 10 ma. 1.1 ah. Okay, 1 kg equals to 10 ma. Your conversion is 10 ma. Okay. okay. Kg now you have to change to gram. Like kg equals to how many gram? Ah, don't tell me your design cannot. Ah. You cannot I ask my, my, my niece, three years old niece to teach you. <laughs> so kg to gram is three, three unit, right? I mean, three decimal, right? So kg to gram means you have to throw away the k, right? Which is three, uh, three zeros. Uh. So 0 0.11 times a thousand. 0 0.11 times thousand. You okay? Are you, are you following me? <laughs> times a thousand. So 0 0.11 times a thousand is one one zero gram. Okay. Okay, of all the hassle, yay, we got our liquid X in gram already, 110 gram over CM3. Okay, now, I have 93 ml. ml can be direct converted into CM3. Okay, so 93 ml equals to 93 CM3. If it's a liter, you translate to a meter cube. 
Yeah, so 93 ml change to CM cube will be the same number. No, no, a little bit different, but let's ignore that because no point. So we are copying the answer. Okay, calculator and, and let me know your answer. Maybe I can have CT to give me your answer. You're right, CT. Oh, my lower back is crazy. Oh, oh damn. 1.183, nice. Let's leave it in two decimal place. Lah. So 1.18, okay. 1.18 GCM negative three. Yay, is that all right? No problem. Okay, uh, so there you go. That's uh, a, bit, a bit from like last time on. Uh, um, density a bit from from one, but that's basically how it works. You need to do the conversion a bit, a bit the leche, but that's how we find out. Okay, so uh, that's your Archimedes principle. That's what you need. So then Archimedes principle leads you to uh, vehicles in water and uh, some theory theory, but very simple. Just quickly go through, then we're done for the night. Okay, uh, vehicles in water uh, always fulfill the criteria of streamlined shape. So can reduce friction or water resistance. So sheep are always sharp at the front or boat are always sharp at the front. So it cuts through water. Okay. So the uptrust produced is the same. So in order for a sheep or a boat to float, the uptrust from the water must be equals to the, to the sheep. If you want me to think, well, how, how I, I can't believe it, I can't believe like a few hundred ton of cruise sheep float in front of me in the harbor, at the harbor, where a 10 cent coin can actually sink to the bottom of the sea. Like, what? Huh? Like, oh, I cannot, my head very big. Like, oh, like the, the lorry bang my head like that. I cannot, like, oh, I cannot, cannot process. So as you can see, it's not about how heavy the thing is sometimes. It's more of like, do, are you able to displace enough of water? If you are able to displace enough of water, you'll be able to have very big uptrust. You'll be able to float whatever you want to float. So why sheep or boats are able to float even though they are so heavy? That's because they displace a lot of water from the sea. I mean, they push a lot of water away. Then they will be able to create a lot of trust. Okay, that's because their volume are big. You all know sheep are uh, the bottom part here, empty one. Uh. The bottom part is actually very big one, you know, empty one, you know. It's the hull of the, 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 the sheep where there is a lot of like maybe engine going on, but it's basically empty with air. So it basically displays a lot of water and up trust is greater. But the thing is, if you have a lot of load, you carry a lot of things, right? Then your density increases, then that actually will cause you to sink. Okay, no problem. So anyway, that's basically the idea. So lastly, submarine works very simple. In order to go down, so you must be able to explain that, huh? Ballast tank filled with water, then becomes denser. So they fill up water. Lah. It's like if you in swimming pool, ah, you want to sing, like you drink water. Lah. You open your mouth, whoa, 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 all the water go into your lung, then confirm you sing. Lah. Okay, if you want to rise, the air is pumped into the ballast tank. Okay becomes less dense. Then there is a lot of air. Then that makes you becomes less dense, then you rise up. Okay, Bam. nothing much. Basically, it's just explanation. Yeah, um, we still have Bernoulli, which is like a one last part to do, but um, actually I didn't want to rush things off because uh, we, we still have time, don't worry. We can actually do Bernoulli next week together with your chapter six, which you all received your new book already, right? So we're doing that together because that chapter is a lot shorter. We can kind of 
brush up. So uh, I will continue this next week together with the new book, chapter six, okay?